So now that we have understood the basic of the Linux terminal and we have understand that the terminal and the shell gives us a way to interact with our operating system and to execute arbitrary commands to control the computer. We, we want to basically make it possible that we repeat the different steps that we have formulated multiple times. So automatization is very important. So imagine you have come up with a clever way of, for example, managing your files. And you can do this in this terminal by typing in the now 50 of, com of the commands. So the next time you want to cleverly organize your files again, well, you would have to type the 50 commands again, right? So that seems to be a bit um, repetitive task. So the power of the shell is that you can actually save these commands into a file which we call a script and then you can in execute the script which then executes the commands. So in fact it turns out the bash program is a little bit of like a programming language itself and lets you write more sophisticated applications. We, we are just looking at the surface as part of this tutorial. Um, so let's get started with the core ideas. Um, so we need to create a file which is a shell script and in order to do so what we can do in our um, PDF viewer we can copy and paste this information but whenever you copy something from a listing sometimes the characters are slightly different when you paste it. So therefore we typically embed these uh, files into the PDF so you can right click and for example save these files. It depends on the PDF viewer you are using but basically you can open these files and save them and then you have the original code. Okay, so let me explain this little program first and then we type it in. So on the first line what you see is what we, we call the so-called shebang which is um, the hash and the exclamation mark. This is a, an indicator for the bash to know by which program you have to execute this little script. In this case we want to execute the script using the program that is found under slash bin slash bash. So this is our regular bash shell by which we want to execute this little program. Then we touch a file called output, we save here message is a variable, we save a text, then we echo this message which means it prints this text and then what we do here finally we take this message and use this little character here which means the bigger s but in our context here it indicates that we want to redirect all the output that is generated by the program left of it into a file called output. Okay? So what we will do is we will store this message that we have assigned to this variable message. We have printed it. We will also store it in the file output. Okay. Um, as scripts can be quite complicated it's not actually necessary that you um, input all of this at once. What you can do, what we will do now, we can test first what's going on by using the bash as an interactive interpreter of this little programming language. Okay? So what I'll do, I just type in the command. Let me start. We have an empty directory here, nothing here. Okay? So touch output, it says. Do an ls. Oh, there is a file called output. Let's have a look what this file is about. Well, it's empty. Zero at the moment. Now we say we add a message. Message. Let me just say this is a message. Okay. Nothing was output to, because we saved it into a variable. So now we want to print the content of this variable. I can say echo message. Well, this is a message. So 
it did exactly what I asked for. So now we want to store this message into the file. Like I said, we can use the bigger S um, character that we know from Mal to redirect it into a file. So let's say output. So whatever has been generated as output from this program here on the left side, again, is stored into this file called output. Good. Let's have a look at the file output again. Now there are 18 characters inside. Let's print what's inside the file output. This is a message. Now that's really nice, right? So now let me generate uh, a little shell script, which we said is called myscript.sh and automatize this little process, okay? So I will now copy and paste from the um, tutorial sheet and save it, okay? So now we have saved this little script. And again, if I have no idea what it does, I can copy and paste the commands because these commands are executed by the same command line interpreter, the bash shell that we have been using all the time. Okay, so now let's have a look. There is a file called myscript.sh and we want to execute it. Well, how do we execute a program? Well, we execute a program by calling its name. However, if you try to do that, you will, you will get the message command not found. Why is that so? The reason is that in Linux, the existing programs, they are stored in a variable. So the directories where you can find programs are stored in a variable. And in this case, um, any arbitrary directory isn't saved is in this variable for the reason of safety. But it's still possible to execute a program by using relative paths. So I can use my dot slash my script dot sh to execute a program. So if you do this, and, and I just want to remind you of more typical errors, in this case, you will see permission denied. Permission denied, why is that so? Because Linux knows a couple of permission rules and, and uh, has a very sophisticated, let's say, uh, model for data access, one of which is that uh, you can only execute programs or scripts that are marked as being executable because you don't want to execute a normal text file, for example, or a document, right, or a PNG file. It doesn't make sense. You want to execute scripts, you want to execute programs. And to find out what permissions are set, we can use again ls-lhh. And we see that myscript.sh has the permissions as indicated here. The Linux permission model is so that you have a um, user as the, the first bits. So we see it's read and write. Then we have a group. The group is read and writable. And then we have world. The world can only read this file. So anyone on this computer can read this file, but only a user, which is the current user, which is Ubuntu, or someone in the group Ubuntu can write to this file. But how do we see that something is executable? Well, it's indicated by the X flag and direct by four directories. It means that you can actually change into them. But we have to somehow set this flag now for our little script. There is a program to do that, which is called change mod. Uh, we can specify what we want to do. I can say, for example, plus x, which means please add the executable flag. Now we do this to my script. Let's have a look again with ls dot lhh. And we see that it's executable now for user, for the group, and for world. And you see that the color changed actually when I use ls dot, when I use ls program. So it's now becoming green. So now I can run it using dot slash my script and you see that it outputs this message and if I use ls dash lha I see that the file output has been generated again having the content of my file. So just to recap, right, so it's possible to basically use this interactive shell to practice and figure out what commands to use and once you are sure that your program makes 
or the commands that you type make some kind of sense, you can store it into a script and allow the system to execute all those commands again. So please try to do this now and play a little bit with it. You can um, as well store additional uh, commands into this file. What do we want to do for example? Let's create a little directory mkdir test1. Right and then we can say cd test1 and inside this directory we want to touch a file uh, readme.txt. Right let's do that. I saved it. I remove output, nothing here and I run the script again and you have a look, there is now the directory test1 with readme text. Okay, this is really powerful and I personally use it a lot to automatize typical tasks on my computer system and to reduce the overhead of typing more complicated, um, I would say, commands and programs into my system. So play with it and you will find it's very useful when we get into C programming to uh, run some little tests or to compile your codes. Good luck if you have any question, ask us.